Welcome, everyone. I am joined by Marcia Quinton, psychic medium. We've just recently collaborated on a book together, Motivate Your Life, where she shares about spiritual motivation. Uh, awesome to be chatting with you today, Marcia. It's awesome to be talking to you, finally. It's lovely. Yes. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, you know, we've been in contact, but not, not in this way. So this is great. Absolutely great. I had a- That's awesome conversation the other night listening to everyone else's talent and how beautiful and uh, sincere they were with everything they were talking about and you could see the heart and soul in what everyone was doing and I think that was just so special incredibly special it really was to get their message to get their message out there and it's just wonderful so I've many- got a question for you. Uh, what in what motivated what motivated you to become a psychic medium? Initially, um, I, I I guess it's been around me all my life, on and off. Uh, mm-hmm. But when my daughter died, mm-hmm. which was quite tragic, it was the cot death, and um, you know, there's never any really reason for it. Um, and it motivated me to. I couldn't believe that that was it mm-hmm. daughter I just couldn't accept that was the final I thought there's got to be something more because I'd had experience mm-hmm. in early in my life where I'd seen a man die on a beach in Kiama where I lived and the body mm-hmm. was still just so still and I thought where's the life force where's the life force mm-hmm. seven years old and I never mm-hmm really understood that and then I was looking for life forces in other people which was the aura and the energy mm-hmm. and I just thought when she died I thought that I can't accept that it wasn't just grief mm-hmm. um, and I happened to be working with a lady whose mother was um, a spiritualist in England and mm-hmm. she talked to me about a life after death and um, I eventually found a church um, quite a while a spiritualist mm-hmm. place where I might be able to find someone where I could connect with her um, to test that theory out because I'd had strange dreams all my life mm-hmm. and I finally found Enmore church in a phone book I had one in the phone mm-hmm. um, and I walked into that church and I was home that was the most the oddest feeling I knew I'd come home so when mm-hmm. You know, the soul obviously knew, but I didn't. So that was part of the reason when I became more involved in that and then I stayed to develop the psychic and the mediumship ability. Um, Mm -hmm. 34 years, I helped to run the church for those 30 of those years. Mm -hmm. Um, And it, 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 it brought home to me how important it was we had to go somewhere when when a resolution of grief didn't happen um, with the normal process what was after that what was after that and in, in in honest the honest truth is I have so many people coming just to know that their loved one's safe on the other side and that they're there mm-hmm. um, and that they can actually get a little bit of comfort from the communication, I think mm-hmm. it spiritually motivated me to, to want to continue with that and mm-hmm. to what I could to help those people. Um, and, and that's why I, I spent 34 years doing that in the church. Wow. And then I decided, um, you know, I needed to get out more into the public and, and just work with what I had or who I was. Mm-hmm. Um, it become an identity associated with the church you know you are the church identity um mm-hmm. i haven't i haven't really stopped doing anything since i was five years old i think in in wow. spiritually motivated um i can recall way back um an incident in one of the grades in school where we were singing a hymn you know the, the piano player the teacher was playing the piano and all of a sudden, I was in the, the in the position of reverence, mm-hmm. without understanding that, and everyone laughed. And I was like a silly fool, but I had to keep that reverence there. So it meant mm. even then, I was being motivated toward um, the spiritual side, the soul side. Um, mm. And I I, um, I found um, sometimes it's challenging. 
Um, mm -hmm. But um, also when I go back, um, I look at um, my childhood. It was just a normal average childhood, but I would, mm -hmm. and that's very hard in a family, a big family. Mm -hmm. You're a dreamer, you know your way out there. What are you doing, Marcia? Um, right. That's just who I was. Even in school, I'd find myself sitting in some place that was the classroom, and I'd think, what am I doing here? And that thought would pull me back into the classroom. Um, so, and I guess, you know, um, I'd wake up some nights, oh, I'd wake up some nights, and I knew I was falling, and I was falling at such a tremendous speed. I thought, oh, I'm going to hit the ground, I'm going to hit the ground. But then I'd wake up. So I right. my body um, so many times that um, it, it, it sort of scares you, but when you wake up, you think, mm. right now. Um, so I was being prepared from a very young age, and obviously this is what I was meant to do. I mm. remember a, um, a regression with Peter Ramsey. He's well known for doing... Um, regressions and um he took me back because i was going through a bit with my daughter's loss and my daughter he took me back and there i was a vision of a child baby in in, in one of those bass, bassinets mm -hmm. and it was an indian and with a mobile and in those days there wasn't any mobiles around and it was a red feather that was my spirit guide so i thought mm -hmm. you've been there since i was small and you've been keeping an eye on me which is really that's fantastic what that's advice fun. would you have for someone that um uh, wants to connect with their spiritual guides more uh and seeking spiritual nourishment it, it's vital that you get the right connection um mm -hmm. and sometimes people go from one connection one person or go to that show or go to that group or go to that workshop um and Every time you move around, you're evolving. You are actually evolving spiritually, and spirit are trying to connect you up with what they're trying to teach you. You do need a foundation. You do need to sit in a group, um, and you do need to be able to have like-minded people around you because it's a little bit frightening when you don't because there's a lot of fear on, based on some people thinking, oh, I don't know to those people I feel the energy is making me feel fearful but mm -hmm. in a, and if it's a medium they can balance it if it's a good teacher they can help you balance mm -hmm. that energy and be able to connect with your, your spirit when I was mm -hmm. developing we sat in a group um, and we sat for, for, for years but today mm -hmm. time doesn't allow that to happen and I mm -hmm. think involvement in the human being today is fast because spirit um, are coming through so many different people in so many different ways. You you hear about um, mediums evolving and going out and speaking mm -hmm. to people. Your channelers are writing and they're bringing um, spirit through. It's like it's just, to me, society or the world needs they need to hasten up our spiritual connection, our soul mm -hmm. um, to deal with whatever's ahead of us to help. Mm -hmm. Because we've lost, we've lost sight a little bit of our soul, and it's very vital that we connect with it. So finding a group um, and finding um, a teacher that's going to be able to help you keep you grounded. Because I mentor quite a few. Um, I can speak of one girl I'm mentoring now, and she's just come along um, so well. Um, I just guide her, you know, talk to her, guide her. She's a beautiful spiritual artist. She's a beautiful medium and the evidence she's getting, just like that. She said, I don't know, I can't understand it. I said, just trust in what they're giving you. And you do mm -hmm. have to develop a trust with the spirit world because mm -hmm. you can really see it unless they're very, very clairvoyant. But sense mm -hmm. your eyes, you, you're aware that there's a presence here with you. Um, um, I'm sure you've felt it at times, John, I'm sure. Of course, of course, absolutely, yeah. Because you're you're soul guided, you're, you're very yes. soul guided, and you 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 are a people's person. So you'd have to feel everything they're feeling at times. Mm. To be able to knock some of it away from them by just being there, because that's your heat. You're a healer. You you, you have mm -hmm. to. I don't have to touch anyone. I just 
know that they hear mm. to them. Uh, and the more um, you draw these people in, um, you're actually opening the door for them, mm. for, for their development, for people to come to them and help them. So if you could find a group or a good teacher, there's good and bad. Everywhere. Yeah, of course, everywhere um, and anything, yeah. If, if they're only teaching you on the psychic level, that's what you're going to learn. If uh -huh. you want to develop to um, do survival evidence and communicate with um, loved ones who've passed um, and bring them through um, to those people who come to you, then you need to develop a little bit more on your mediumship, which means a lot more time has to be put aside for you to, to evolve into that. Um, yeah. It, psychic, everyone's born psychic. It's whether mm -hmm. you view it, use it or not. A lot of people use their intuitive. They say it's in, their intuitive or their gut feelings or that I had this sense of something or knowing. Mm -hmm. So really you just know something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I work, fortunately, I've been very fortunate in my development of having worked with some of the very best in Australia. Mm. Um, Robert Dent was one, one of the best clairvoyants um, that I've ever worked with. Um, and she had that from a very young age. Um, and I could name quite a few who still come to me from the spirit world. Um, yeah. Much, um, and it's nice that they can come back and help some of their students still yeah um, but i've been fortunate but um uh, and i know if you look around today there's quite a lot of um good mediums out there um yeah. that they can actually uh you can google one today if you want um it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't mean uh, it's best, never been easier to connect in with yeah it's teachers very easy. And mediums um, it's and, very easy. Yeah. there are some there are some people who do some you know, way out there things, um, but that's not going to get you the mediumship. Yeah. If you want another a learning curve, I think. Um, yeah. I've run classes and developed people um, for many, many years. Some of them are really working out there now doing this good work. Mm -hmm. um, motivation has got to be in you. Mm -hmm. um, really work at it and to actually... Um, Put aside that time to do it. It, it, it isn't about, you know, it's just going to fall into your lap. You've got to be motivated. Mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. um, and I find some people come and then they go away after six weeks and then, you know, think they know everything or it doesn't take years. Mm. Of course it does. Yeah. So um, I can tell you a lot of stories about. Uh, the journey, the, the, the wonderful journey that we've. I'm had. sure, sure. Well, I'm curious, everything. what do you, what do you? I'm curious if, uh, if you don't mind, uh, what do you hope readers get um, from reading uh, our book and, in particular, your chapter? I think all of us have a journey mm -hmm. in a spiritual um, pathway. Mine is. Yeah. To Mine is more of a spiritualist. Mine is more of working with the afterlife, uh, working uh -huh. with the spirit world. Um, uh -huh. And I just hope anyone that has some questions or some doubts about what's happening, that they'll find some um, information in there that may give them some guidance and that may help them and not to be afraid to step out. When I mm. started nursing, one of the things was taboo. You know, you don't, don't do any of that stuff it's all really mm -hmm. um so you suppress a lot you suppress a lot um and i think with the world today you can open up more and i was i'm just thinking that anyone that is in need of comfort spiritually or mm -hmm. sick um their loved ones in the spirit world that they'll be able to take that step forward um mm -hmm. and know that you know there there is comfort because i found comfort um when i went looking for my daughter mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had the most amazing experience yesterday morning before I woke mm -hmm. up. I actually had my daughter in my arms as a baby and I could smell her, I could touch her, I could feel the weight of her and I could kiss her and I was just um, sort of overwhelmed with that love and that presence. And these things can happen to people and then uh -huh. I 
but they are just a blessing. So uh, like lucid dreaming. Yeah, you're in, in that sort of state, half awake, half asleep, um, mm-hmm. and remembered it. And it was, and it's her birthday on Saturday, so I think that was a gift for me. For mm, that. It was beautiful. just amazing. And reassuring them, you're okay. Um, mm. It just brings you back. And I, I, I speak to, I spoke to one gentleman who came for a, 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 a reading and mm-hmm. his father came and I was telling him what his father was talking about, what he'd like at a funeral and all that, um, not knowing that he said that my dad's being buried tomorrow. So I'm glad he told me that. Then I can put that in the service for him. So, uh-huh. I mean, that was quite, yes. quite, yeah. quite startling. Um, uh-huh. And it's just the way things do happen, you know? It, it's just... It's just fantastic. Um, I had another la- another young lady come, her friend had died, and not that they tell you these things when they come yeah. in, um, but she died on a honeymoon. Oh. And one of those buggies tipped over and rolled on her and killed her. And oh. uh, um, her, her husband was in yeah. terrible grief, and she gave all the details and wanted to reassure him it wasn't his driving, it was the mechanic's. In, in the vehicle, right. um, the family had sh- just chopped him off and he was in a state of whether I'll stay or I won't stay, you know, right. whether I'll off or not. Um, so she took that back and that sort of whew, helped him get through um, the mm. service that they were having, you know. Mm. So um, if you can do something like that, um, and, and help someone, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And it's not, you know, you, you don't think you're on the greatest there is. You've got to keep your ego under control. Yeah, I realise that. You've got just, nothing to yeah. do with the yeah. gift you have or what you bring. Yeah. I know I've, I've been a nurse for over 50 years, and I, I think I worked all those 50 years, John. Um, <laughs> there's nothing more satisfying than mm. bringing comfort to someone mm. more uplifting than doing what you can even if it's mm-hmm. just for someone um, mm-hmm. so it, it was easy for me to transfer um, my nursing um, abilities or the way I worked into this because mm-hmm. I do care for people I do think mm-hmm. you know, I think there's so much potential in people that they don't always mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. I think you see that, and, mm. um, and that's why you do what you do. Um, and I encourage yeah. you to follow their spiritual motivation, whichever way it leads them. Mm-hmm. I think the door that opens is an experience. It's either what you want or it's not, oh, that's not what I want, you know. Mm-hmm. That's important. Um, I really do. Um, when I was growing up, I... Um, I found myself writing a lot of stories mm-hmm. and not knowing what motivated me, but mm-hmm. what I realised then, it was stories about, you know, someone had a gross accident or someone had, you know, died of a, in a, a, a peculiar way. And what I found, realised as I got older, is was spirit coming to me, telling me about mm-hmm. their life and their past. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... That really came home to me when I was in school. We had to write, you know, write their stories. They give you a title. Mm-hmm. One was, I don't want that, I don't want anything like that to happen to me. And it was a woman who had an accident. I came to a woman who had an accident in a wheelchair and lived an awful life. And the teacher said, do you know someone like that? I said, no, just came to me. Uh-huh. And was, she said, have you ever been to Hawaii? I said, no, my family didn't have holidays like that. She said, well, you just describe the the airport and the entry into the airport going into Hawaii exactly as it is. I said, well, I've never been there. So, again, it, it was the spirit motivation. Just guiding, yeah. Yeah, continually bringing that forward. Um, yes. But they're also very protective of you, um, you know, I think that sometimes you was when you're growing up, you do daredevil things. 
And there are sometimes I think, how did I get out of that? How the hell did I get out of that? And I realised a lot of it is they were looking out for us. I mean, yeah. the spirit guides, it's um, your own people, your own loved ones who are in the spirit world. Yeah. Do keep an eye on you and do try to do what they can to help you. Um, I have a friend um, and she's been referred to um, often as sitting around a table having a cup of tea um, talking to the family, uh -huh. but is for her. That's how she developed, and that's how spirit had developed her. And it's like, oh yeah, there's Auntie Mary. She's just come to have a chat. This is what she says is going on. Um, so everyone develop in just a little differently. We're all um, different personalities. So spirit do have to work with us um, mm -hmm. as we are as a personality. People mm -hmm. don't change to suit the spiritual seeds that 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 are, mm. you know they they're still a personality those personalities reach a certain number of society um mm. and i don't always agree with the way some work and they might not agree with me but we all evolve spiritually and we all motivated in in a different way um and mm. i think it's very very vital um there's a lot of things. I've been a trance channeler. I was involved in trance early in my development. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, I'm sitting in a small group. Yeah. Um, and, and all these um, uh, voices started coming through, you know. Right. And they weren't my voice. And I thought, how does that happen? How does that happen? Um, and I tried to replicate that when I wasn't in the, the group. It wouldn't work. Right. Right. Um, and it'd be a rough, really rough gravel voice, um, and that would be them developing um, an etheric voice box. Um, and so whenever I am in uh, under control, um, it, it's quite often um, a different right. voice, and it's using that voice box um, that they built to do that. Um, Telling's very nice. quick, but it's very mind control. Um, very much more control um, and it's fast yet yeah, they're trying mm -hmm. to take you into deeper states sometimes mm -hmm. to forward depending on what they're trying to convey or what condition you're working under or where you are um, mm -hmm. it's very important to them um, you you spoke of a, of a medium um, in, in America that's in the book who does channeling and things. Um, oh, yeah, Esther Hicks. I'm, I'm very keen uh, to read Abraham. her. Yes. I'm very keen to read her um, uh, story to see how she portrays um, what she was motivated by because we're all different. We all have something. Yes. I guess I'm a, a, a serious, serious um, lady, but as I get older, I try... Right encourage others to evolve because I want to pass that passage on. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Spiritual motivation because, you know, when you start to get older, um, as I said to this beautiful soul I'm mentoring, who's a beautiful spiritual artist who's doing mm -hmm. um, my uh, oracle deck, we're doing it together. She's the artist. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm the writer. And okay. uh, uh, that when I pass on i want her to keep the legacy going you know she said what mm -hmm. do we do? you pass i said you keep the cards keep the legacy going um mm -hmm. that's that's what it is it's not just mine it's for everyone that to me is yeah. motivation from the spirit world is to share to give to mm -hmm. humanity that's the the crux of what drives me is what my guide brings and he's got the greatest capacity to love um, and That's so, awesome. um, the need in people or understand people far more than I can, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. He never critical. Mm -hmm. never. He said, there's always a reason. You've just got to go underneath the surface, lift the scab and see what really is causing the problem. Right. Um, great camouflages in life, he said. We cover up. Um, right. Um, no one wants to know us if we've got that situation around us. Or right, right. Um, and he is a, a, an incredible, um, I could say friend, um, uh -huh. and um, 
someone that I have a great admiration for. And, you know, he appeared to me as an Indian brave and he said, that's what I am, but that's what I do. I've chosen to come as that because they're very okay. spiritual, um, the Native American Indians. So have a great- yeah, so you have a particular one that's a guide for you. Is Red Feather, yeah. He's a particular- yeah, Red Feather, yeah. Um, he doesn't do everything. Um, he doesn't do, always do the readings with me. It'd be someone mm-hmm. who would come in. Um, so you get different influences and mentors from the spirit world to uh-huh. help evolve and to help you work in different areas. I worked two and a half years um, running a healing group, uh, a free healing group um, on a Thursday night for two and a yeah. half years. That's um, fantastic. Was great. With a doctor. Uh-huh the spirit world and i had all these beautiful healers uh all working giving um and evolving and it was a magical time i it was really a magical the results were magical um that we got from people coming in everybody that's terrific I, i tell you i tell you um john i've been very blessed um you have i have had a lot of tragedies along the way but i don't of let them course. down because they're a part of okay deal with it learn yeah. to accept it um, because it's going to hold you down the memories are there but mm-hmm. there are the light energy if you let mm-hmm. the green stay inside you all the time you're never going to achieve you're never going to be motivated to do anything that's one of the reasons why i work with helping people um connect with their loved ones because grief is terrible hold, hold you really fast yeah you leave that grief um, and, and move on. I had a gentleman who rang me from Brisbane um, and he wanted to, um, to, to have a reading. So I, I brought through this young man and, and not knowing, but I said this board passed very suddenly, very tragically, um, and it had to be part. And his son, who was um, 21, just never woke up. One wow. to wake him up for work and he was gone. Um, and his son, through me, with the help of spirit, spoke to him, um, and he just said, I just feel like I can breathe again. I feel like I can breathe, that he's all right where he is, and Mm -hmm. that I'm going to find a way to be able to get through to him myself. Um, Believed him in in an enormous way. Um, So it's it's quite... um, it, it, it just makes you feel like, okay, I've, I've been able to help someone, but um, if you're too free of ego, I'd say no. Yeah, no, it definitely that makes egos. sense. Yeah. I don't, so what, I don't worry about egos. Being a yeah, nurse that makes years, sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Being a nurse for 50 odd years, you help so many people, you don't develop an ego. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that's like. Well, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious, uh, what's next for you? I know you're creating a, an Oracle deck um, with one of your, your clients. Uh, what other things do you have on oh, the, I do a lot uh, of, on the I go? I do a lot of public demonstrations. Yep. Um, and I work with a, a very, uh, very um, good medium, uh, Melda. Uh-huh. Uh, lovely, lovely soul. Um, uh-huh. um, she works a lot with the physical side uh, as well. Okay. Um, we do a lot, of, and uh, I'm at Katoomba in October with her, and I'm in Mittagong in October. Oh, fantastic. Um, then I'm doing one talk, uh, with Janelle, um, just in a demonstration out at Emu Plains, somewhere out uh-huh. there. Um, we've just done Newcastle, so we, we, I'm working all the time, and um, I've got the in spirit, which thankfully the books will be here, so we'll be yeah. out of the books. And yeah, from that's awesome. The mind, body, and spirit. We're four days there. Um, yeah, so that's sort of, and I do a lot of church. So, so that's fantastic. When is uh, sorry? When is the um, the expo? The four day. Well, thirteenth starts on the thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth of October. Of October. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, um, mind, body, and spirit. If um, just sent uh, Taryn and I an email about. Okay. Promoted, so I'm going to send her the information on the book so we can promote that as well. So, okay. and where, where can people find that uh, that expo? Um, it'll be that Darling Harbour. Okay. Yep. It's on, it's on all the medias now. It's coming around on all the medias now. 
social medias. Yeah. Uh, and it's at the moment at Darling Harbour and it's being promoted extensively now because they do that start now. They started a month. Yeah, so Darling Harbour's in Sydney for those people Sydney. that don't know that. Sydney, sorry, yeah, yeah Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have one in Brisbane and they have one in Melbourne. I think the Brisbane one's just been done and then they're coming here and then they'll yeah. go to Melbourne. And then I'm not yeah. sure about Adelaide, but they do have, so it's well advertised and well known. You get thousands yeah. of people down there. Yeah, I'm sure. So because they've sent an email, I thought we'd try, I'd try to get, uh, to send it, promote the book um, because there's four beautiful um including myself, four beautiful authors. There you um, go, yes. <laughs> so I thought that I'd try and get them to promote that book. So I've got 100 okay. coming. Um, yeah. And if you need more, Marie's got some, so I'll take them off her. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Fantastic. So well, yeah, well, awesome chatting with you today. You've got so much on. Of course, people can, can come and see you at the Expo in Darling Harbour. That's yes. the 13th to the 16th uh, yes. of October, uh, Darling Harbour in Sydney. And uh, you have or Oracle decks. Uh, we can also I have put a new Oracle deck out, Spirit yeah. Dream, um, uh, yeah. Soul Guidance cards. They'll be out. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, we've run the schedule, quite schedule on that. I also yeah. have another pack, which is a channeled pack, also from my guy. Um, okay. A, a book that I promoted for my students. I encourage right. them to write. You know how we get all this okay. inspiration? And, and nobody Absolutely. does Absolutely. Sure do, sure do, sure do. Sure do. So do you have a website we can share? Sorry, we can share your website yes. link? Um, okay. We do. It's www.marcia.net.au. Uh, okay, cool. Well, I, we can put that in the comments down below. Uh, yeah. Is there any, any last words that you wanted to share uh, with our listeners? Um, I... I I think that there are so many beautiful souls in the world. Yeah. And I think they get so much information um, and they gather so much around them that mm -hmm. I'm going to put these things into words. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest things that um, I, I have a regret about is when I was mm -hmm. very young medium in the church, I wanted to get the stories of the mediums, the older mediums and their journey, because it wasn't an easy time back then. Mm -hmm, I can imagine. To write anything about it. So that is lost. Mm -hmm. You know, there was so much, so much. The only one that really wrote was Margaret. Um, and it's just, it's just something that's very important. What you feel, what you feel you want to do, don't hold back. Let it go. None of us know when we're going to go. It doesn't matter how much of a medium you are or how psychic you are. Um, you just don't know. Mm. No, um, well, that's sage advice. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Marcia. That's all right. I know what uh, I say to you, yep. John. Um, yeah. My, my, my guidance, um, which is Red Feather, um, yes. It's, um, appreciates what you're doing. Um, he said it's time that other people stepped up to do things like you are to cover the world. Um, and I just wrote something. He said, all souls seek an experience through the earthling as it gives another perception in understanding the passage of human life. As we continue to evolve in the spirit world, our percep perception is somewhat more peaceful and can be a little distorted from the reality of yours. So a frequent journey of a soul of, from a soul group comes back to life so that they can have that experience, so that they can help us more, fu more fully, fully and mm. understand the comprehension of what we are experiencing. So I think that's um, when people feel that they've met this, that they feel like their soul's connected. Doesn't yes. Thing. It just means that they've come in and they're there to do something and to help each other achieve that. And I think mm. very, very important. I don't know. Yeah, that's well, that's a great, great way to uh, conclude. Uh, yeah, message from uh, Red Feather. That's beautiful. I love him. I love him very much, and I know. Beautiful. I got red T-shirts. So. 
Yeah, and you've got the red glasses, so it's an honour to uh, yes, red oh, yes, feather. I have to. <laughs> John, I can't express enough thanks. Yes, yeah, thank you. And good luck um, with your expos, of course, and the work that you're doing. Thank you, John. Um, I'm talking too yes. much. Okay. I know, it's all good. Thanks, Marcia. Thank you for your Thanks time. You. Bye. Yeah, we'll have the links down below where people can get a copy of our book and okay. also uh, access your website and things as well for all the different events that you've got going on. Okay. Uh, so thank you, everyone.